today we're in Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, my name is John Maynard. This is my father, Sergeant Claude Frederick Maynard. And uh, again, you've seen some videos on what we do. Um, the system that we teach is offensive strategic body defense. It rolls right in from defensive tactics, hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, into your pistol training, shotgun, uh, rifle. Um, what we're doing is, is everything we do is a gross motor skill. And my father taught me to do this many, many years ago, and uh, it's what we're doing today. And again, it's come full circle. Uh, you look at the stats on how people have their hands on their firearms, uh, especially law enforcement, and uh, it's just not what you think it's going to be. Um, again, I've been doing this all of my life since uh, the early, early 70s, uh, maybe even the 60s. And uh, my dad is a World War II veteran. He was on the uh, Army pistol team. He was an MP. And uh, has spent a lot of time with the 1911. He completely understands it and gets it. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, just how you carry is how you carry. Just have a system that works for you, understand it, and know it. So we'll turn you over to Sarge. Hi. Right. I guess John's, uh, he's been around guns ever since he was uh, three years old. Uh, not that he was using them, but. I always carried a gun, carried a 45. Uh, I noticed that he, he mentioned uh, the sights on the 45. Really, truly, I don't think that the sights are. I think they're good for the range, but when you're out in the face of John Q. Public, you don't need a, a sight. You just might as well use your finger because your finger is going to be your aimer. Uh, in other words, it, uh, you're the subject that, that you're going to shoot at. You never think about a sight. Uh, it's just a matter of pointing your finger and the, the weapon will, like so. And uh, it, it, if you point your finger right, you're going to get your, get your uh, adversary. What, what happens there is the hardest part about firearms training, number one, is always safe. You can see all these firearms are unloaded. We have our training weapon here. Um, it, it, grip is the most important, people understanding how to do it. And again, what Sarge said was it's just pointing your finger at the target. You've done that your whole life. And uh, it, it, it is as simple as it's toes, get it toward your nose, and we release our round. And again, it comes down to a gross motor skill. and. Um, you know, police officers are, and law enforcement are under duress when they do this. Uh, you know, 90% of the time they're 10 foot and in, and the statistics out there uh, are not on the side of law enforcement as far as their hit rate and things like that. But we're working on that, trying to make it better, not only for the everyday public, but for the police officer also. And what we were just talking about was uh, just point and shoot and how important that is. And what we'll do is, uh, if you look at Sarge, how he brings his weapon up and this goes back to the old OSS training which was the World War II how to use a 45 very important very good taught to shoot one hand most of the time in situations it is going to be one handed um, I think we spend entirely too much hand, uh, time on shooting with both hands uh, you need to obviously be able to shoot with your primary hand and your support hand uh, being able to do both uh, statistically you know there's a lot of different variables but it's just about getting things in the correct position and releasing your round and obviously looking at your backdrop. But uh, those are the things that we want to do. So if you'll look at Sarge now, how he just raises his weapon up, even from where he's sitting, it's not going to be much different than he would do if he was standing, okay? So you notice how he drops down into his target and the OSS training, where they were trained is they would bring their weapon up like this and lean into their target, whereas now, you know, people are punching forward with their weapon and we're working on a lot of things now with the gross motor skill. When you point, you point like this, and it's not this way, so it becomes more prevalent with your hand that way. When you switch um, to your support hand, it's real natural to turn that weapon in a canted level because when you point, it's not like this, it's like this, and it's the same thing with either your strong hand or your primary hand and also collapsing in. Also, that allows you to use both eyes and you know concentrate on your target uh, you know, side alignment, I'm sorry, side picture side alignment, but getting your muzzle in the correct direction. Really, really important. And 
again, it's just about going from the old OSS training, which is they would go to here and drop into their target, and now we're working on punching forward, whether you're going support hand, strong hand, both hands. And although it's a little bit different, it is what it is. Know your system, know how to use your system, but understand all of this is going to be under duress, and the most important thing is mindset, mindset training. Uh, in this situation, you, you have to be successful at this to protect yourself, your family, your country, your loved ones, and that's what's most important is understanding what you're doing. Most people think because they have a gun, they understand how to use it, and firing a... That's a big lab. Yeah, it is. And firing and using a firearm correctly and understanding what's going on is just, again, mindset is what we preach all the time. It's mindset, mindset. We do the same thing every time. And our defensive tactics, it's here. When you're shooting, whether it's short gun or long gun, everything is still done from here. And we do everything the same way, and we do it all the time because under duress, you're not going to remember. Uh, you're not going to remember things. It's going to be gross motor skills and what you've done over and over and over again. And no matter how good you get at this, there's going to be problems. A lot of great trainers will talk about whatever you know, whatever you do, you're going to do it under duress. You, the only thing different is you will do it slower and worse. Again, we, we'll talk about magazine changes and things like that down the road. But again, however you carry, carry around in a chamber, don't carry around in a chamber. Carry it in your pocket, a smaller pistol with a, uh, you know, with your pocket holster. We'll go over those things down down the road on how to do that. But again, this is about Sergeant. Uh, you know what he does as far as just picking that firearm up, dropping it down into his target. And uh, I, I've been around firearms my whole life. Um, I am not afraid of them. I respect them, but I am afraid of people because most of the time. People can be real idiots. Uh, even if you're around firearms, you are going to have a negligent discharge. Something's going to happen. That's why that downrange is so important. Keeping that firearm downrange all the time. Keeping your finger off the trigger. And uh, one of the great trainers says, keep your booger hooker off the bang button. The gun will not go off if your finger is off the trigger. Um, it, it, this is where it lives, and it stays there. And the grip is rolling it in like you're ringing out a tap. People talk about, you know, grab, uh, use the firearm, grab it lightly. Do not grab it like you mean it. It's yours. You own it. You control it. You are in charge of it 100% all the time. If something goes good, it's your fault. If it goes bad, it's your fault. Uh, statistically, a lot of police officers are shot and or killed with their own weapons. We're working on that, working on retention, uh, also for the everyday person. And, uh, you know, this is America. You do have the right to defend yourself and your family. We are not talking about taking advantage of anything or anyone. We are talking about defending ourselves. A pistol is, at its core, a defensive weapon. That's all. It is defensive. And it is very, very difficult to shoot. It is even harder to shoot correctly and getting rounds on the target. Statistically, police officers are about 20% when they're shooting. I know there's different levels and you know where they are, how far away, and things like that. But again, we're working on that. And, uh, you know, our police officers, are, our law enforcement is our first line of defense. And uh, they're underpaid, they're overworked, and they don't get the things that they need to make them better, to make our public safer. Uh, again, this is John Maynard with uh, OSBD. I would like to thank my father, Sergeant Claude Frederick Maynard, for spending many, many years in helping me with my mindset and, and making this, you know, part of my life. Uh, I'm a martial artist. I've done it all my life. And this is just an evolution of what we've done. It, Firearms training is a martial art. You, Again, you know one thing, John, that uh, I, I, I think about, and many times that I've used my weapon, I, I can never remember in moments of difficulty of ever aiming my weapon. I've never talked to anyone that has. What Sergeant said was he is never he can never remember using his sights when he was in a combative situation. I'm yet to speak to someone that does. Long guns are completely different. When you talk to people about long guns, yes, it's, it's much more prevalent. It's more out at your reading distance, and that's what we're trying to do is get people used to that reading distance when you, when you uh, get that weapon out there. Your reading distance is here, keeping both eyes open. When you shut one eye, you lose a minimum of 50% of your vision. You don't need it. You, both eyes open. By both eyes open all the time. I was taught that way. I was never taught to close an eye. I was never taught to use my sights. Just in this is 2013. I just started using my sights about a year ago, 
and uh, the guys at the range that I work at, uh, they, they thought it was funny. And uh, it's your sight is, you know, this is your rear sight, this is your front sight, just like on a firearm. This is your front sight and rear, rear sight. They asked Wild Bill Hickok, how come he was such a good shot? He said, I don't know. I just bring the weapon up in front of my eyes I, and I shoot. And it is what it is. We have our rear sights here, our front sight here. As long as we are in some semblance of the stance and we can get it pointed in the right direction, we're going to have at least a chance. And we work on things by not being on balance. And that's well, a whole other level. You see, you see it, uh, in these Western movies, uh, of all the Western movies I've ever seen, the great shooters, Wild Bill, Hickok, Buffalo Bill, Cody, and so forth, I've never seen one of them aim a, a, a pistol. Yeah. Maybe a rifle, but yeah. pistol. They point their finger and that's their weapon. Right. And they pull the trigger and uh, they get their job done. Right. In a combative situation, this is going to be about at the most 20 footer in, but it's probably going to be at arm's length. And, you know, it is what it is. This is going to last 0 0.3 seconds. There's going to be three rounds fired. And, you know, that's when things start happening. And in this situation, you know, there, there's not winners and losers. It, it, it's whether you survive or you don't. And that's just how it is. And we have to be diligent at what we're doing, the mindset of what we're doing, and the most important thing is that grip. So I'm going to do that a couple of times just so you can understand what's, what's happening here. So if I go from my holstered position, as I turn, hand comes to center, I stay in my workspace. As I punch forward, I try to take my other hand and put it forward and punch out. And the reason I do it this way is because it is more of a gross motor skill. Again, my father was taught a different way, and he's a very good shot, a much better shot than me. And uh, again, I, he, he is a, an excellent shot because he was on the pistol team, but he grew up shooting guns. Um, it's, it's what he did. He grew up in Mingo County, West Virginia, and uh, you know he's. he's been around firearms his whole life, and so have I. And I've never been afraid of them, always been taught to respect them, and that's what's extremely important about this, is the respect, not only of the people involved, but without question, the firearm. It's your firearm. It's your job. Carelessness is, and do not be careless with it. If you're carrying a firearm with a round in the chamber, you need a strong side holster, so you cannot get to that trigger. I hear of accidents all the time about firearms going off. The, leg, yeah. the, the trigger has to pull. You know, I've heard of guns going off without the trigger being pulled. In fact, I've seen it, but that's a malfunction in the firearm. Uh, with that being said, if your finger is here with that for that firearm to go off, something has to happen to manipulate that finger on the trigger. And, I mean, it can happen. You see people make mistakes. They stick their hand down. Something can happen. But, again, downrange is why that is so important. Again, I'm just going to come out Draw a couple of times and punch forward. And if you watch Sarge do it, he does it just a little bit differently. And again, this is not the way, it is a way. And whatever you develop for yourself is fine. Eyesight makes a big difference. But you must be in that combative mindset and also that combative stance. I see people shoot all the time where they lean back and look. You've got to get that head forward. You must get on top of that weapon. You are running it. It does not run you. When you see that firearm doing that, that firearm now is running you. You're not running it. You must get on top of it. Chest press. Push those hands out. Ring that towel out and get your work done. That's what you're doing. Again, stay safe, guys. Uh, this is very, very important. And I hear horror stories every day. Uh, let's not let it happen to someone else because of our negligence.
fun in this old hangout. We get stoned at the jukebox and stay out of fights. Now and then, light a little smoke in the truck out back. Oh, then a little old Jim Beam and we get right. And you know these flashing lights sure make me dizzy. They turn the long horn into a spaceship And I'll be leaving just as soon as I finish this beer Cause you see I'm a dinosaur Should have died out a long time before There's a whole lot of dinosaurs Give us our hats, excuse me man, but where is the door? Get us our hats, excuse me man, where's the door?